Okay, hello, uh, Year 6 uh, parents. Uh, very, very warm welcome to Gordano. Uh, I'm Tom Inman, head teacher, and in the corner of your, the other corner of your screen, uh, you'll see Danny McGilloway, uh, deputy head. Uh, uh, I'm really, really sorry that we can't be doing this in person. We would love to be welcoming you, uh, obviously, across the threshold, but alas, uh, circumstances have prevailed. Uh, that means we can't. So we will do our very best. Uh, to give you uh, the same uh, information and introduction to Gordano uh, as we normally would in our year six introduction to parents. Uh, as uh, I've just uh, uh, just introduced uh, the two of us, uh, just to run down a few of the few key staff uh, that uh, you might you'll be hearing from and seeing uh, over coming weeks and who will be key points of contact for you. Obviously, I'm, uh, I'm the head teacher uh, and Danny is one of our two deputy heads uh, and Danny leads on pastoral care and behaviour in the school. Uh, Lisa Weber uh, is our other deputy head teacher, and she leads on learning and standards. Adam Snow is our assistant head teacher in terms of in charge of key stage three and transition. Uh, and Vicky Lloyd uh, is head of year seven. Um, so a really warm welcome. Uh, we are really delighted uh, to uh, to be uh, welcoming your sons and daughters to Gordano in September and fingers crossed that will be a full return for them uh, from the first day. We are delighted that you've entrusted us with the re significant responsibility uh, of uh, your child's secondary education and we will do everything we can over the next five to seven years to support you in that endeavour. We appreciate that at the moment times are difficult, uh, times are very unknown uh, and we are all working uh, to understand what our new normal uh, is going to look like. Uh, rest assured that we are taking every care to think so carefully about the experience that year six have had over recent weeks and months and how we can continue to make sure their transition is as smooth as possible and their first steps into Gordano are as smooth as possible so that we can launch them into a brilliantly successful secondary school career. We hope this brief presentation is informative and useful for you. It's not meant to be too formal. Uh, the aim is to give you uh, an impression uh, of that transition. And this is the first of a number of presentations and hopefully uh, some visits that will be taking place to help that process happen. After myself and Danny have spoken, uh, Vicky Lloyd will uh, will be saying a few more words uh, on a few other matters uh, to bring this first presentation to a close, and then there'll be uh, further information coming out in coming days and weeks. We know there's quite a lot of information coming, so it's never too much to get in touch with us and ask. We'd much rather you ask sooner rather than later. And if we don't have the answer, we'll make sure that the right person comes back to you very, very soon. Obviously, we hope it's a really exciting time uh, for you and your sons and daughters, uh, but we don't underestimate that it can also be quite an anxious and a daunting uh, time uh, moving from primary to secondary, and especially this year, uh, given the interruption to the end of year six. We want to make that as worry free and as easy as possible for you so that your son or daughter is as quickly settled and happy at Gordano as soon as possible. We benefit, we benefit greatly from Gordano being a school with a really strong local and national reputation. Put simply, that allows us to recruit the very best staff who can give the very best experience both in and outside of the classroom to our young people so they can flourish and gain the qualifications and wider experiences necessary to go on and follow their dreams and lead happy, successful lives. But we're not for one second complacent about our reputation and we all have a responsibility to make Gordana the best school it can be. The students, the parents, the staff, both teaching and support staff, the governors and the local community. And I'm going to pass over to Danny at this point to pick up uh, some of those themes a bit more. OK, thank you very much, Tom. Um, and again, um, hello to everyone. And um, sorry, this this can't be in a more traditional fashion in, in our hall. Um, but yeah, I'd like to talk to you a little bit more about um, about the, the key things that, that you'll want to know and that your children want to know as they start thinking about joining us in September. And hopefully, as Tom said, uh, they will actually be able to join us in September. So there's no doubt um, in our minds and hopefully in your minds that your, your children are the most important people in the school. And we always try to remember that. We try to listen to them and we try to involve them in leading in the school and in, in every aspect of school life where they can be involved. So we have house councils, we have house captains, sick form councils and many other forums 
and we ask the students a lot about their learning and their experience so that we can use their feedback to make the school even better. We do have high hopes for them and high expectations of them. And these are underpinned by our values, pride, achievement, community. This is illustrated through some of the following. For example, expectations of uniform. It's a sign of pride to be a member of our school community. We've introduced some elements of uniform new in the last uh, number of years. Um, and hopefully you'll hear more about that from Miss Lloyd's videos when she, she does some videos with students who will be talking about the uniform. Expectations around behaviour, being polite, being kind, being respectful of staff and others, and being tolerant and understanding of one another. Expectations of involvement. This school has got a plethora of clubs, of organisations to be part of, and there's so many wonderful experiences your children can be part of. And that's really important for their growth and their journey through uh, the next five to seven years of their school life. Expectations of commitment to their own personal success of not being a passenger in that journey, but taking responsibility for their own learning and their own experiences and making the most of them. So those are some of the things that underpin those, those, those values of pride, achievement and community. As parents, you will want the best for your child and we intend to deliver that. To help us do that, we are actually incredibly lucky that we have complete parental support. It's seen as the norm, almost without exception. Parents will stand side by side with the school and unite it. And we value that immensely because it's absolutely critical aspect of your child's success. That united front will help them at school, it'll help them at home, but most importantly, it will support the young people to understand the common expectations and boundaries. We ask for your support in maintaining, maintaining the highest possible levels of attendance, for example. It should only be in the most exceptional circumstances that your child is not in school. We ask for your support of our school policies, whether it be dress code, behaviour and consequences, punctuality, for example. They're all there and designed to allow us to achieve consistency and our expectations and to allow for 100% focus on learning. The vast majority of the time in school are not actually spent in school. They're spent at home. And that's why the time you spend at home talking up the importance of education, supporting their aspirations, supporting them with their homework, encouraging the healthy lifestyles. These are crucial ingredients of their success. You will receive many messages and letters from school. What we'd ask is if a message comes home via your son or daughter and it doesn't quite sound right, just ask us first, check it out with the school. On most occasions, it'll be a simple miscommunication or maybe it may be a message carried in the wrong way and a quick email or phone call will resolve those issues in minutes. However, we do recognise that at some point in the five to seven years of your child's journey, there might be something that we do that you might not fully understand. We would always ask you to start off a position of trust, that the school is acting as fairly as it can and with the best intentions of the student, of your child, and to get in touch. Don't let the problems build up. If you're unclear or struggling to understand the school's position on something, it saves time and maintains that all important positive relationship between school and home. So please do just get in touch. We ask you to communicate proactively with us and we will do the same with you. Now, what you'll find, however, is that this differs from what you might be used to when face to face communication at the school gates with a class teacher, for example, might be something you're used to up to now. Strangely enough, um, your students, by the time you get to secondary school, will not want you hanging about school gates looking to speak to their teacher. Um, and given the size of school, it also means that it won't be easy to just pop in and see the person that you wish to talk to. So as I say, as much as the communication might be a little more remote, we do work hard to give you the same quality of timeliness of response. So please do get in touch and do not let that more remote nature get in the way of you getting in touch with us. An email is our main and often easiest uh, form of communication and it's often the easiest tool for contacting staff and they won't hesitate to either pick up a phone or email you back. In terms of the learning and the behaviour, 
Fireflight is our online learning platform. It's a, it's a one stop shop for students, for their homework, their online resources. You'll have a login uh, and you can see your child's timetable, homework, attendance, reports, etc. etc. Then we have class charts, which you can download the app for. And for those of you who have siblings, you'll, you'll have that app for your siblings where you can see the merits and let's hope, hope not lots of behavior points, but you can see those as well. Um, and you can keep a real track and parents like to use that as a real incentive for the children at home. And then there's a website which keeps you informed of the news, for example, through a regular online, new, online newsletter. And finally, we have a series of parents evenings and information events in each year. We do ask you to be proactive in attending these so you can be fully informed. Listen, in advance, thank you for your engagement in your child's school life and I look forward to meeting all of you New Year 7s in September. Fingers crossed. I'll hand back to Tom. Brilliant. Thank you, Danny. So just to finish off then, what uh, can you expect from us? Uh, you can expect excellent teachers uh, to deliver brilliant, uh, brilliant lessons. They're passionate, they're talented, and they really, really care uh, for the students in our charge. You can expect a really broad curriculum with lots of choice, but a central place for maths, English, science, and the languages. You can expect early choices in Key Stage 4 subjects, GCSEs, to allow students to personalise their pathways uh, and, uh, and give them the time that allows them uh, to develop that flourishing interest. You can expect personalised learning experiences where appropriate through the student centre with a wide range of skilled professionals all working with students in different ways with different needs. And a student support faculty for any students with particular educational needs to nurture them and give them the best access uh, to uh, an appropriate curriculum for them, including additional support for those who need it in core skills. You can expect something for every child, the comprehensive ideal of catering for all types and tastes through a range of subjects and a vast array of wider opportunities. And those opportunities stretch uh, from sport to outdoor education, to productions, to debating, to foreign visits, to competitions, to student uh, enrichments, community involvement, uh, charity events, and so on. Primary schools uh, uh, will be aware, of course, uh, of some of those. Uh, they've had the opportunity, students, to come up and actually see some of our performances. The Adams Family, for example, last year, our big school production, uh, and we'll get a sense of the wide array, uh, array of choices available to them. So in conclusion, what are we trying to do at Gordano? We want our students to be motivated, confident, secure, challenging, aspirational, successful, and most of all, happy students, and they really are. I'm really conscious of the great responsibility uh, that we have in taking on the education of your children over the next five to seven years. There's nothing more important in the world than securing a really strong education, and we take that really seriously. This is a place of great opportunity, and it's up to the parents to help open all of those opportunities up to your children and up to, up to the children uh, to take them. And we looking, look forward to them starting to do so from September. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi, my name is Mrs Lloyd and I'm Head of Year 7 at Gordano. I'm not going to say too much in this video as over the next few weeks lots of videos are going to come out for you to watch with your children to introduce them to lots of different aspects of life at Gordano School. If you've got any questions or queries please do email us at transition at gordanoschool.org.uk and we'll get back to you as quickly as we can. We're really looking forward to meeting you and your children in September.